Hey guys, um, so we're going to start off with rounding numbers for today's fifth grade worksheets. So rounding numbers is very simple, but just to recap, so whatever number we are rounding, you always got to look to one number to the right and determine if you are going to change the underlying number one up or just keep it the same. So remember, if it's if the number is greater than five, you change it up one. If it's not, you keep it the same. So let's do number four together. So we're going to determine if we change number or the number two. We're going to look at six because it's the one right number. Obviously, six is a bigger number than five. So we're going to make it plus one, which is three thousand. The rest becomes zero because we are focusing on this place. Next, multiplying fractions. So multiplying fractions are probably the easiest thing to do with fractions because you literally just multiply across. So let's do number two together. Seven to all times five, six. You literally multiply across each other or straight because there's another thing called cross multiplying which we will be seeing later so seven times five 35 12 times six 72 and there you go now we're going to be looking at cross multiplying what do we use cross multiplying for we're going to find it to find an x or isolate, which basically means to get x alone. So let's look at number 3, for example. So 4 over 8. And we, the, the equal sign is very important to keep. So how do we do this? We literally multiply across. So the x and 4 cross each other. And 28 and 8 are literally across each other. So let's multiply 4 times x, well it just becomes 4x, because the x isn't a number, but it needs to be there. It's, it's like a very small multiplying in, th in between, but that's, we don't need it. And 28 times 8 is 224. How do we isolate the x here? You divide, because 4 divided by 4 is 1. It becomes 1x or just x. However, 224 divided by 4 is 56. So x equals 56. So you're basically just solving it with cross multiplying. It's like the missing number. And lastly, we will be looking at percentages. So we're working with very easy numbers. So of course we all know that 100% is, or I should say 100 over 100, because this is the 100. However, when it comes to 10, Um, 10 over 10 is 100, of course, just like all numbers. However, you see that there's a difference in the fraction. And that is because 10 times 10 over 10 times 10 is equal to 100 over 100. So let me explain. So let's look at number 1 and 2. We got a 7 over 10, and like I just so showed you up there, you multiplied it by 10 to get the 100 on the bottom. You need the 100 on the bottom in order to get a 100 percentage, if that makes sense. So you get 70 over 100, and what does this become? 0 0.70. Another way you could have looked at this with 10 is very simple. You could have just done plain 0.7. I wanted to show you how it works. And you know, number two, very simple. It's just straight up 0 
and we move two decimals because of the hundred. Here we only used one decimal because of the ten, but the thing is, these two are the same, just in case you didn't know. Thank you for listening, and I hope this all made sense.